Welcome to Dupo Remo. <sighs> Let's not use that one. Yeah. But, and now here's the whole point of this conversation. Let's say that there was a procedure and I were in Tally's shoes. There's no doubt in my mind I would toe the party line. There's no doubt that I would jump through hoops. I mean, she screws around and has all sorts of silly fun playing pranks with Shay. I wouldn't have done any of that stuff. All day and all night, I would have been jerking off at the image of myself as some perfect pretty <laughs> and doing all the things that you're supposed to do so as not to disqualify myself for this 16th birthday thing. It, let's take it a step further and say, an old man comes to the door and I answer the door and he says, I can turn you into a friggin' George Clooney clone or whatever your perfection ideal is. You just I'll, have to push the button. Oh, okay. Somebody dies. That's fair. That's a great. You won't know who they are. Okay. That's, that's fine. I would push that button like I was a stupid kid with a Game Boy, man, a, a million times. I wouldn't care if a million people had to die. The old man says, you got to kill your grandparents slowly with a pickaxe. I would do it. You got to kill your nephew who you love most of all the people on the earth. I would do it. Now, does that make me a f***ing monster? Probably. But since it's just you and me, and by this point in Dupo Remo, nobody is listening to the show, that was a horrific thought of what would I do to be pretty? And the answer was, what would I not do? I'd do anything. I would be so much worse than Tally. I would be a monster for this chance. And that was kind of an upsetting thought. And so, of course, I, I wrote a story about it. But oh. I don't know. Did you at any point ever have this conversation with yourself about, do, do I like Tally? Do I not like Tally? Do I like Shay? What's wrong with the voice for Shay? Can you tell me <laughs> what your thoughts were before you got beyond where I am in the story? I don't know if I really had that conversation with myself. I've always been pretty. Um, no, uh, <laughs> I've always been a self-centered douche, though, so it's kind of the same. You know, they talk about the people that become pretty, and you haven't mentioned she has her friend, Paris, who they were best friends forever kind of a thing, and they were never going to part, and he goes off to be pretty, and never ever once, and he's been pretty for, you know, months, and hasn't once come to visit her. And she's really upset by this because, you know, they were going to be best friends forever. What, what is the deal? Well, the very first scene, she sneaks into Pretty Town to see him. And he, I thought he treated her like a friggin' leper. Right. And he's like, nobody can see you with me. Oh, you know, hide your face. Here, take this flamethrower. And I don't know where the story's going, but I got the impression that this guy, whatever feeling he once had for her is completely gone now. And to me, that scared the crap out of me as a, oh, geez, what else is going on with this procedure? That's the first pretty, we well, those partiers that are like, oh, ugly over there, half a mile away. Yuck. <laughs> you can smell it from here. I was just like, wow, you know, I would never want to be around any of those people. And so that kind of frightened me that that put a black stain on this perfection that they were all aiming toward. Mm hmm. Yeah, you don't know where the story is going to go, and I can tell you it's going to go everywhere. All right. It's going to go here, there, and everywhere. And one thing that I found really interesting about the whole series is it is a series. It's not one of those books where you read the first book and it ends, and you're like, oh, I guess I can, I can stop here. I'd be oh, fine. it's not a standalone story. It's, it, each time they end with the ending that leads into the next one. I hate that. And you've got to keep going. Yeah, it is a series. It's not a book, as it were. But okay. Yeah, they take it to every conclusion that you can go to. And well, are you able to put your mindset back to when you were at the point I am yeah, now? Yeah, I'm, I'm what trying to. What were your to. thoughts on Tally and Shay? Do you remember when you were first introduced to these characters? Was there any feeling of I like one more than the other or I can relate to one more than the other? Yeah, I, I could relate to both. I mean, having grown up and gone to high school, you have to be able to relate to the kind of things that Tally's thinking. Everybody who was in high school wanted to be pretty and be popular. 
everybody wanted to be with the cool group, the group of, that everybody loved and everybody wanted to hang out with, and yet you weren't cool enough to be with those people. Maybe you knew one of those people, and sometimes you could hang around them for a little bit. And get a glimpse of what that life right. might be like. See that you don't fit in with them, really, kind of a thing. And everybody wanted to be popular. Maybe some people, I, I doubt anybody listening to our show, was one of those people. Because people you, that are book nerds and stuff like that, the kind of people that listen to audio fiction magazines, weren't the kind of people that were the cheerleaders. Although I'm sure maybe there's a few. It's possible. Since nobody listens to the show at all, there's none. But uh, anybody who went to high school, who's made it through high school, understands that kind of longing to be that. So I can totally see that feeling. And I, I can understand even your, what would you do to be pretty? I've been dealing with that, you know, for the longest time. I got married and I was just like, yeah, who cares? And I ate whatever the hell I wanted and I got super fat and I didn't give a crap. And then one day I realized that maybe I was making a bad decision with all that not giving a crap. And since then I've been trying to be pretty. And sometimes I think about what would I do to be pretty? I I think, gosh, if I could just go back in time to before I started down that road and just say, hey, dude, don't do it. It's so much easier to keep it off than to to get it off later. Just don't do it. I, I, you know, I wish I could do something like that. Things like that, you know, what would I do to be pretty? I don't know know what I would do. Okay, so a guy comes to your door. And and if you don't want me to go this way, you're screwed because that's what I want to (laughs) do. It's fine. I I don't think that I would do it the same way as you. No, no, no. Okay, but I'm saying, uh, let let me give you a scenario. Okay. And it's, again, the show only works, this episode only works if we pretend it's just you and me. And if there's somebody out there listening and they think, oh, you're a, you're Hitler, you're terrible, <laughs> you don't like cats, then just pretend that we're characters and we're trying to make you laugh with the awful things that we say. But a guy comes to your door and he says, I've got a magical box and when you open the box, you will lose 50 pounds or, or if you're 20 pounds overweight, 20 pounds, whatever you are overweight. I don't know. 175. No, that's not quite. That. And it'll be off for a year. You won't have to do anything. In fact, you can eat all you want and you can't gain another pound over whatever your perfect maximum thing is. And he says, but tomorrow your little daughter is going to get in an accident. She's going to break her arm. It's just going to be a little accident. There's ice outside on the (laughs) sidewalk. She's going to slip and she's going to fall. No one will ever know. And maybe maybe that's terrible because you love your kids more than you love you. And instantly you're like, oh, bullcrap. No, I would never push that. So if that's the case... Tell me and I'll come up with something else. That's probably is the case because I, I, I was going to say that as you were talking, you know, you push the button and somebody dies. Yeah, I, I don't know that I could take it that far. Okay, but Being, she's not going to die. I know. Breaking the arm is not as big of a deal. And for all you know, she may break her arm anyways. Oh, gosh. It's... That's a great ending for the story, though. <laughs> is he finally, he's like, no, I can't. I love my daughter. And any pain that she felt would be worse than being <laughs> fat. You know what I mean? Right. And she still falls and breaks her arm anyway. It's like, oh, crap, the end. Gosh, I'm going to write this fast. Yeah, before the uh, episode goes out and it's stolen from you. Wait, nobody listens. You'll be fine. I'm fine, yeah. To be continued. Can you say continued? Continued. Can you say continued? To be continued. <laughs> you know what gets my goat? That this show is produced under your Creative Commons 3.0 license. Why would you bother?